you know, I began to tell the Lord that a number of you were not there. And I was pleading in my spirit because it was a very heavy unction. And it has a purpose too. Many people under heaven have been bound by yoke of Satan. I've been discussing with you devil exposition and the satanic strategies in the last days. As I go from nation to nation and work among Christians, from ministers to members of the pew, I saw something very common among them. I saw many people still bound by Satan. From bishops, prophets, apostles, pastors, evangelists, name them, to Christians bound by the devil. And because of that, I began to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord helped me understand this. The Bible says, do not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Do not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. And I understand that people are bound who have been set free by Christ because of their lack of knowledge of the devices of the devil. Last week, therefore, we looked at devil exposition, the origin of Satan. I showed you in the Bible, God did not create Satan. He created Lucifer, a wonderful angel, excellent in splendor. But then I showed you from the book of first the book of Isaiah 14, and from verse 12, which tells us, how have you fallen, O Lucifer, O morning star, son of the dawn? You have been cast down for, to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. So we recognize there from Ezekiel 28, how God created Lucifer and anointed Lucifer as a guardian cherub. And this Isaiah said he fell. No wonder many anointed men and women fell by the same Lucifer. So I began to wonder why. Why would some people belong to a life church where God speaks, where God reveals himself, blessed by the prophetic, established by the word of God, spoke excellently of what God is doing, and one day say, I'm moving on. I expected that when you move on from a place, it should go to a better place. If you move on from a job, it should be to earn a better salary in a better company. But it's not so with these people. They move on from where God is speaking, where God has showed himself mighty signs and wonders, where the ministers live exemplary life, and then they move on to a place where they, they are in desert, in oblivion. You see them a few days, few years after, and you wonder. Why should a, a man and a woman meet themselves and express love to themselves? And the woman decided to rely on the man's confession. And they truly love one another. All right? At the time, they would say, I will give you everything I have. And suddenly, after getting into marriage contracts, gradually, things began to change. And before you know it, in their mid-age, the house is hell. There is no agreement from morning till evening. How does that happen? Why should it happen? Where is the law of this spoke about? The B. Christians have 
And you are prayer partners, and so you have spoken all your life to your prayer partner or to your friend who have been sympathizing with you and praying with you. And suddenly he began to draw away from you because he had gone about revealing your secrets and slandering you behind you. How should that happen in the house of God? And eventually it came to your hand. How could it be that a Christian in a church were fasting and the pastor of the church was having affairs with some members of the church during their fasting. For days, 60 days of fasting. And everybody's gathering to pray until one day the Holy Spirit arrested one of the women and she screamed in the meeting. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Pastor, you have been sleeping with me before everybody. Why is that happening in Pentecostal church? Why should somebody who is a minister of God use his position to exploit others by compelling them to sow a seed? In other words, when they talk about their seeds, they are saying you give the money to them. And charge each one for prayer. Charge them for deliverance. Charge them for healing. To pray, you pay. And yet they are selling in the church of God. How are those things happening in the church of God, by the way? How? You started a life with God, burning with fire, and suddenly along the way, you began to draw back. Your zeal began to grow cold. How can it happen in church that church members before whom a number have died and you have attended their funeral and yet you are not serious with God, thinking that you have many years to waste? How could that happen? That even if we went to burial service, it should call everybody's attention to the danger of death without Christ. To the danger of death without fulfilling what God has sent you to do. But yet, you see some Christians, it doesn't wake them up. How could it be that a born again child of God works from Monday to Friday and then God gave you a covenant that meet me every first, second, and third. And they just sleep or stay at home and watch on television or watch on Zoom. Just say, meet me on Friday, every last Friday. And people who have been doing it are testifying, and others are in the same place, but it never occurred to them that there is somebody working on their brain and mind. How could that happen? Let me tell you why it's happening. There is a spirit called the devil. For every calamity that mankind has, it came from him. For every, you know, demise of God's people, it came from the devil. Misfortune came from him. First Peter 5, 8. Why the first one you put there was correct, but skip it for a while. Be self-controlled and allowed. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Let me take you to some deeper stuff. We say we're going to do that today. The reason why all this battle is going on earth is because on earth are two kingdoms. The first kingdom is God. 
The second kingdom is the kingdom of Lucifer. Of course, we looked at it in the book of, in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, how the kingdom of Satan started. You remember last Sunday? Yes, church? Let's talk. Yes? Aha. And then what I read to you from Isaiah said, how are you falling from heaven to the earth? And then Revelation chapter 7 verse 12 said, Woe to you, Anne, for the devil has come up to you. You remember last Sunday? Come on, come on, come on, speak to me. Good. Now, let me show you something. If you look at the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1, very quickly, I'm going, to, I'm going to just introduce these two kingdoms to you today and tell you a little bit about what they do. And then next week, we will go into detail. Because I want to anoint you today. But I want you to get rid of the devil in your heart. That is the essence of today. To make up your mind that Satan will not have a right on you anymore. That is the purpose of today. Because what the Lord told me to anoint you, he said, because many of you are weak to the enemy. He said, I should lay hands on you that you will receive strength from God to overcome the vice of the devil. Because if you don't, it can end you in hell. Apart from frustrating you in this world, if you are born of God, the Bible says you overcome the world. So why should the ruler of the world dictate what you say, your emotions, what you decide, and what you do? None of his own children is dictated to by the Holy Spirit. Satan is, don't receive instruction from Holy Spirit. Witches don't receive instruction from Holy Spirit. They receive from Lucifer. But why should those born of God be instructed by evil spirits? Today, God will put an end to it. Amen. You are not supposed to, but it's because you don't understand the devices of your enemy. That's what I want to start to expose to you. So that you can tame your lion, remove his teeth, his claws, and he can't hurt you anymore. This scripture says to me in Romans chapter 1, Therefore there is no condemnation, now no condemnation, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Now, this scripture introduced to us two laws that govern the earth. There is the law of the Spirit. Anyone under such law cannot die. There is the law of flesh. Anyone who comes under that law will die. I would together now. But it went further to say the next verse. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. Underline the word sinful nature. So, when the Bible says what the law was powerless to do, it means it's talking about the law of sin and death. The disparity between the law of sin and death is that the law of sin is powerless over your flesh. It was, it was weakened by the flesh. So we die. It says, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man. Why? In order, order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Who do what? Let's read together. Read it again. So there are some people that Satan cannot mess about. That's what the Bible is saying to you. But those people are the people who live according to the law of the Spirit. 
when you live according to the law of the spirit the law of sin has no dominion over you let me help you know this as for those of you who are young younger will raise you up from this church you can live the whole of your life without one regret if you grew up in Christ with tabernacle are you with me now while those who are older can tell you many regrets because they just lived their life in the days they did not know Christ the way they think best not knowing that if you are not born again you are under the control and influence of Lucifer of Satan really not Lucifer, of Satan we understand his two caps but as scripture just says to you and I those who do not live according to the sinful nature all right but according to the spirit they are the one who are called the sons of god so all of us said i believe in jesus as my lord and savior i confess you as my lord and savior i receive it to my heart does that take you to heaven you have just begun the journey it doesn't Some have said once you are born again, you are forever born again. That's a lie of the devil. Because the Bible says here to you and I that if you are free from sin by the blood of Jesus and the seed of God lives in you, you are supposed to live according to the law of the Spirit of God. So, if you live by the law of the Spirit of God, you will end up in eternity with God. But if you live according to the law of sin, you will die. So, let's look at the second kingdom before we come back here. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter, one, chapter 2 verse 1. The second kingdom. There is the kingdom of God. So, the kingdom of God is governed by the law of spirit. The kingdom of Satan is governed by the law of flesh. Now, watch this. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and, and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. Underline that in your Bible. And of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. The next verse. All of us have lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of what? Let's read that scripture together. All right, I will read it. So, so something is in this scripture and Romans I read. What is it? Speak it out. Go back to Romans. We'll come back to this one too. It's, today, you know when I anoint you, you don't know this. The power is here, but the receptor must be charged. If the receptor is not charged, if I lay hands on you, nothing will happen. I prayed for sick people, some are healed, some are not healed. I would gather now. I was preaching during a crusade in Lagos. My sister had an encounter, the one that I followed. I'm the second born, but the first boy. I was in their house and somebody came into their house and that person began to cause trouble and the dog went for the person and when the dog went for the person the person hit the dog with um, you know whether sick or wood or something hard and the dog just collapsed and died when the dog died it was then I knew that my, my sister loved the dog more than a human being she screamed you killed the dog, you killed the dog. And people all around surrounded the man to lynch him because of dog. Okay? And I was there. All of them pandemonium over the whole place. Anytime you see pandemonium, who is there? The devil. I've told you, when you see pandemonium, a Christian, if you just follow it, you lost what you are to follow what the devil is doing. 
if you recognize this is the devil and you buy the spirit in a short time, pandemonium is gone. Okay? So, then something spoke in my spirit. The power that raised the dead of a man, how much more? A dog. And I went to the dead body of that dog. And when I got to the dead body of that dog, everybody I said, stop, stop making noise. Everybody stopped. My sister's friends were there who they have told the miracles God was doing in the, in the, in the meeting. And I laid my hands on the dog. I said, rise up in the name of Jesus. And life came back into the dog and the dog weed and started running. People accepted Jesus Christ on the spot. You didn't, you didn't give out a call. Some were on their knees crying because little did they know that the power of Jesus could raise the dog. Now let me talk about man. You know somebody is dead, is dead. An entity dead is dead. So unction does not need faith of that person that is dead. It needs the faith of the one who is speaking. I was called then to a hospital by the same my sister, my elder sister. It, they said, my elder sister said, this woman has a dead baby in her womb for whether four days or five days. And the hospital is not equipped enough to help the woman. They said that they were, they were calling for the general hospital. They want to check some things about her. But the baby is dead. And her fingers have started turning black. The whole of her hand like this. Because the child has poisoned the mother. The dead, of the dead child within four days or five days is decomposing. And my sister said, come and pray for the woman so i went i went into the room or what where the woman was the woman was crying hey 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 of pain there are other people on the bed with various sicknesses in that world sicknesses that tie them down that they cannot walk some of them with the urinary stuff that they urinate. When we were there, a woman who was there, they, she had to go and we, and they had to take her like that to we. Why they were telling me the stories? And then I said to the woman, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes. She said, I believe. I'm a Christian. Do you believe Jesus can heal you now? She said, I believe. And when I saw faith in her, I raised my hand up to the sky and said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I hit her belly. Boom! Leave! My hand pressed her on the bed to the ground. When my hand came up, the baby rose in the womb. The world turned upside down. The woman got up and said, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. People who were there, who could not rise up, began to get up. Because the healing of the baby of that woman charged the faith of others. And because their faith was charged, healing began to take place. Jesus was present in that word. But he cannot do anything unless your receptor is charged. This is in me. Look, if you are not experiencing the Bible, the Bible is still true. There are others like you of your age, younger than you, experiencing it. But they gave their heart. Listen to me. Some people are pushing the power of God to other class of people. You will never operate God's power if you do that. Those who operate God's power... They see themselves as a bonafide receptor of what the Bible has written. 
And because you can see yourself in light of the word of God, that is the reason why the word of God works for you. Whether you are a girl or a boy or a man or a woman, old or young, it's irrelevant. So when I tell you to read the Bible, read it with life. You must not leave this place bound today. I say you must not leave this place bound today. It does not matter what bondage you carry here. Jesus is the same yesterday, today. I am telling you why all the mishaps happen in the life of man. Because of Lucifer. Because of Lucifer. Now, go to the scriptures. Let's read it from verse 3. You read it with life. Shall we? For what? The law? Yes? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes? The next verse? In order... Uh-huh. So you understand that the only business of Satan is to make sure a Christian does not live according to the Spirit. Simple. 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 Just simple. Let me say this to you. That scripture talks about sinful nature. Go back to the, the book of Isaiah, uh, the book of yeah, Isaiah 14 again. Let's see. Verse 12, 2. Shall we read it together? How have you fallen? Aha. Aha. Yes. So why was Satan cast down to the earth? Look at the next verse. Stop. Where did the sin begin? What controls your heart? Your mind. So, if Satan... The origin of his falling is a function of his heart and his mind. Then it means, you can understand, the only thing he does to mankind is to inform your mind. But with misinformation so that he can get your heart. Your heart is responsible for what you do. And what you do is consequential of what you will become. You agree with that? You put effort to your life when you are younger, you will live a life of comfort as you are getting older. You waste your young age, you will live in suffering. Okay? You serve God while you are younger, you have no regrets when you are older. You don't know him when you are younger, when you are older, you'll be saying that, I wish I had known this. Your mind. So, this scripture said, Satan's Lucifer said in his heart. Now, let's see what he said. I will what? I will ascend to heaven. That looks not a problem. All right? He's taught. Then he said, Oh, I think that expresses the intention. The intention. 